today I'm going to be finally working on this Highland Cow mini quilt. I'm super excited. I am going to be hanging this in my kitchen and this has been on my list for a long, long time. I've had it cut out for a long time, I feel like. So I'm happy to finally be able to start sewing on this. And I decided with this um, project, I want to break it up into two parts. So today will be part one. Um, I'm hoping to piece it, to get it done. Um, and show all that in this video. It might take me a couple days to piece this, but I'm hoping to show like all the piecing in one video and then the quilting and binding and all the finishing in video two. So, um, so be sure to check back. This will be video one today, but be sure to check back and look at, um, video two so you can see how this, uh, finishes and how it all turns out. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be super, super cute. Um, and I wanted to just share, I made this sweatshirt earlier in the year. I just took a 12 inch quilt block, quilted it up, or I mean pieced it, I guess I should say. <laughs> and then I just top stitched it on. I did not use interfacing or anything. I just put it right onto the sweatshirt. Um, I haven't washed it yet, so it hasn't frayed up, but these edges will kind of like fray up. But I thought that was fun. This sweatshirt is just from Walmart. Um, I just see people put like quilt blocks on things and I thought that would be really cute to do as a quilter. So that's why I did that. So um, I made this one and then I made another one that has, oh, I can't remember the design right now, um, but it is on a blue sweatshirt. Um, I made them kind of for like fallish and I felt like they could carry me through till spring because I did like a green color and I did a blue color. But anyway, so just kind of a fun way. I've also seen these put on like the back of denim jackets, which I thought would be super cute. If you were going somewhere, you could just throw your jacket on. And I just, I just think it's super cute. And it's kind of like a quilty way or a way to add quilty touches to things. So thought it was super cute. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video today and be sure to check back for part two. sitting here trying to get everything figured out um, as far as the measurements of each of these pieces of fabric because I didn't label them. So right now I'm going back through and I labeled some like these cream ones over here. I'm not sure why, but right now I'm just labeling these. I figure this will be get trimmed off with a seam allowance or stitched on. I'm using pencil, so I'm okay with that. Um, but this, this is a lot, a lot of things to keep track of. Um, for this, this is light pink, so it's the nose. Over here, these light tan pieces are the snout. They're really close in color to this cream, but they're just enough different that difference that when they're put up against um, the face right here, I think it will look okay. So I'm just trying to sort everything out so I can start sewing. So I'm just going to sew this. This is going to be part of the nostril, I believe. And I am using Kona cotton on this. So I just went to my local quilt shop and bought um, this Kona fabric. And actually I do have leftovers, plenty leftovers. So. Once I get done with this whole project, I'll show you what's left over. Um, I kind of like to show that because I feel like um, you know, you buy so much fabric when you go to when you buy a pattern, they tell you how much fabric to get and then you might have some left over and some pattern writers I feel like don't give you a lot of leftover and then other patterns give you a lot of leftover. And personally, I'd rather not have a ton left over because then it's kind of hard to have leftovers because what do you do with those leftovers? Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of, I have a hard time with that. Okay, on this one, we're going to sew corner to corner. I took my diagonal seam tape off, so I do need to get that back on here. So that one's going that direction. And then this one is going this direction. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to go to my iron and I'll be right back. I got the first couple steps done and now I'm going to just try to finish up this page here and get um, the top of the head assembled. These are the eyes there on the bottom. So I'm going to try and finish this page here and then I'll come back and show you what I get done. So I wanted to share how much I got done so far. Um, try and get that thread off there. But here is where I'm at. I have this head um, section done. And then next I'm going to move on to the nose and then piecing kind of a face. So I will share that with you. Okay, I'm going to press this. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. So I was just going to say that I feel like there are a lot of pieces for this one. Um, I know I said that in the beginning, but anyway, it has been fun to make so far. Um, a little bit, I don't know. I want to say challenging. Like I had to like really pay attention to the directions. Um, and all these pieces, all the different colors, the shades, some of the shades of my cream I chose, the cream and the tan, like right here you can see, I don't know, they're really close in color. Um, and so it's kind of a little bit challenging, but it has been fun to make. It's just, I really have to pay attention to everything, I guess. So I'm not sure how much to record. So I did a lot of that last one um, and didn't record it. So I'm just trying to show you little pieces here and there. Then I'll put the whole thing together. Okay, so let's see on this one. Okay, I'm going to... Okay, so these go here and these go here. Um, so you can see here, like, here's a little nose. It's going to be super cute. So let me go press this. I'll be right back. So I know some people have, like, pressing stations, like, right at their sewing machines. And those would, that would be nice. But I do like getting up and down. Okay, so these ones, these two pieces go on the corners here. And then I just sew on the diagonal. So let me see. So I sew towards the center. So I just use my diagonal seam tape. I don't mark them. thinking about another leaders and enders project especially with those nine patches I started and I just need to be more consistent with that but today is not that day oops all right so on this one I have to trim away these corners and I just use my scissors. I don't always use my rotary cutter. And then I'm going to press these and then add these. Um, I will add these two rectangle units. I'll be right back. Okay, so you can already see the little nose coming together. It's super cute. And then you take these guys here, these little pieces, and sew them on the sides. Ooh, they match up really nicely. And I find like with this Kona, um, it doesn't stretch a ton. I feel like it really stays in place. So, and I'm going to pin it anyway. I was, I keep thinking, okay, maybe not pin, but I do like pinning. I don't know. Maybe I have a love hate relationship with it, but I do like the outcome when you pin. So I tend to pin. 
even though it takes a little bit more time. I don't like that. Some of my pins are old too. I need to go through my pins and get rid of some of them. Do you guys ever do that? Do you ever get rid of your pins when you're so, uh, and replace them completely? I've thought about that and I can tell which ones are new and which ones are old based on how they look. Um, so I consider getting rid of my old ones and replacing them with new. I just have not done that yet. But yeah, if I had leaders, if I had those little nine patches here, I'd probably probably be getting a lot of nine patches done. Okay, I'm going to press this guy. So cute. I'm going to leave set this aside right now because um, the next step says, whoops, let's see here. Is there two? Oh, there's only one. That's right. Okay, this is an S unit, and these two are eyes, lowercase I's, and you just put them on here, and you sew on the diagonal. So I'm going to sew this and then take it all to the ironing board um, at one time. So now on this one, it says to... So I'm making... They have a right-facing... Um, right facing and left facing. Let's see if, what those look like. Oh, right here. So right and left, different facing. Then you have horns, without horns, without horns and horns. Um, so I'm making mine with horns and right facing. So I guess just like this picture, he'll be looking towards the right. So this goes towards the bottom. So, and then these go like that. So I'm just going to pin this, sew it. And then it looks like I have to add some squares to the top here and then work on those pieces there. And then I can do that, then it'll look like that, then you add those and you put them together. So kind of some interpretation, I guess, to myself. Sorry, you guys can probably hear my ice maker. I'm in my kitchen sewing. I do sew at my kitchen table. Um, I don't have a sewing room. I just live in a small home and we don't ha I have any extra bedrooms for like a craft room, but I do have room in a closet that I keep all my sewing supplies and I just get everything out, set it up at the table. Um, I'll leave stuff out at the table whenever I want to work on a project. Um, I guess I could say that. <laughs> what? But lately, what I've been doing, actually for a while, um, I just, I sew during the day or whenever I sew. Whenever I'm working on a project, I guess I sew at nighttime too. But whenever I'm working on a project, I sew and then, or I should say, I get out all my sewing supplies, I sew, and then um, when I'm done sewing, I clean up my sewing. So I used to always just, I would leave my, not used to, but there was a time where I would, um, leave my sewing machine out on the kitchen table. I would just like put my cover on the sewing machine and kind of clean up all my supplies and I would just push my sewing machine kind of away um, and out of the way. And I would um, leave my sewing machine out and put everything else away. And then every day when I would come to sew, I would just have to grab like my supplies and my sewing machine would already be out. But now I try to um, Put my sewing machine and everything away every day when I'm done sewing and I just get it out every day. And I do that because I just feel like it's nice to not have to have the mess on the kitchen table. And it allows me to just to focus on other things and not worry about all my sewing stuff all the time. Um, okay, so I'm going to press this with an iron. Okay, I'm back. So <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, I never know how chatty to be. I'm always, some days I feel like I want to chat and some days I don't. But um, I don't want this video to be super long. So I'm just going to finish up this um, like snout nose area and then I'll come back and show you guys what I have done. Um, yeah, so let me finish this up. I am excited to get this done. I was trying to think, I was trying to wonder if I have any backing fabric that I could quilt this up with. Um, I'm not sure. I think I might have some backing fabric in my quilt stash, but I'm not sure if I have any um, any batting right now. Okay, I need to press that, so I'm going to set that aside for a second. I'm going to move ahead a little bit, but um, 
So yeah, it was just, that was kind of one of my things. I thought I do have a brown fabric that I could put on the back. Um, and I have enough of this gray fabric that's like the background fabric that I could bind it with. So I'm like kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, I don't know if I have enough batting. I'll have to see if I have some batting. And, and since this is a, um, what is it? A mini quilt? I wouldn't mind piecing the batting. Um, I do piece batting sometimes. So I think I might have enough to do that. So that would be nice because I, because I do want to get this done, just have it done. Um, and as I'm making this, I'm trying to think, how can I, um, I guess streamline, streamline this project and make it go faster or maybe not be so confusing. And I don't know if I have the answer for that, but maybe when I cut stuff out, I could just write on there with a the pencil right away the letter. I did that on some of the fabric, but not all of it. So then at the beginning, when I first started this today, I had to go through and kind of label things. Um, and I think during the cutting process, if I had I labeled, that would have made it go really a lot faster. Okay, let me iron these. Um, I'm going to finish this part up. I'll probably finish this whole section up and then come back and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I have this unit done. I need to get some water and spray this because it kind of got wrinkled. Um, but I have this done. Whoops. And now I'm moving on to sewing the lay the body, I guess. It is the body. Okay. So the body. I'm not reading. I'm just talking to you guys. <laughs> the body unit. So I'm going to do the body. And then, um, let's see. And then the leg unit here. And then um, we can move on to doing the block assembly for like this flying geese unit to make this here. And then um, you get to put everything together. So I'm going to just sew some of this off camera and then come back and show you what it looks like. Um, so I need to lay all these out. And one thing I, I do wanna share is something. I did, so I thought I would get confused with all the colors because on this, you have to have three different colors. I, th I think you can see that pretty well. There are three different shades and I wasn't sure I could keep track of all that. So what I did is I just labeled this and as it calls for, um, I don't know, a strip like this, like you have, let's see, DDHH and LL. I just look back here and I go, okay, what's DD? DD is dark. So I look on here, dark, and then I go and look at my pile of dark fabric that I have laying over there um, on the table. And so this really does help me. Well, but now I am on this body unit, so I'm going to lay all these out, assemble this, and then um, do some off-camera sewing, and I will be back to show you what it all looks like. Today is day two of sewing on this pattern. Um, I just keep calling this my Highland Cow pattern, but it is called um, Cattle Call, actually. So this is where I left off yesterday. I still need to iron everything because I had everything in a bag, in my um, project bag. So I do need to give everything a good pressing, but this is where I left off yesterday. It's turning out really cute. And next up is to sew this star um, and then all these flying geese. So. I will share with you as I start Here's sewing. where I'm at on my Highland Cow mini quilt. So I had to do this section. This will be for the bottom of the, um, the feet. Actually, these are the legs, I think, the legs. And then this is the tail unit, so it will be turned the other way. I just finished these flying geese, um, and then these flying geese for another part, and then a square and a square unit. And then I'm going to be assembling next. I need to take the square and a square unit right here and use some flying geese and assemble the star unit. So then it will look like this, the star unit, and then the flying geese will be grouped together. And I'm making the right facing. So I went through my book and I starred everything that said right facing to kind of keep me on track. So I just want to show you in the beginning here in my book. So here's my little pattern book and it is stapled all together. I did, okay, so I first part started um, putting a star in here that says like for the block with the horns because I wanted to remember that I was doing horns. So I put a star there, star there. And then as you go, there's another block with horns. Um, the right facing because I wanted to remember I was making the right facing. And then as I went through right facing, right facing, and then right here, you're right facing with your horns. So I just put stars in my um, pattern book because I wanted to keep myself on track and I wanted to remember 
what um, cow I was making because I'm like making this one identical to the front of the book. I like the right facing. Okay, so here's what I got done. I got the flying geese unit done, the star unit done. Okay, so here is the layout of my cow so far and I just need to sew it all together. So it's the next day and I just pressed this with an iron and I just wanted to share that I finished it up. So it took me two sewing days to finish this after having everything cut out and prepped. And then today was the third day and I just ironed it. Um, so I'm super happy with it. I love how it turned out. I think it's so, so adorable. Um, yeah, I don't know. It went together really fast. I thought there are a lot of pieces and I thought, gosh, I don't know if I'll make this again, like when I started first sewing it. But then as I sewed it together, it came together really fast. And now that I look at it, I just think it's so, so adorable. So I might have to make another one. I'm not sure, but I hope to get this quilted up in the next video. Um, and then I am going to share that video with you guys. And then I can hang this guy, this little cow, in my kitchen for a mini quilt. Um, but I do think it would be super cute to have, like, a big border around it. And um, to turn it into a throw quilt for the couch. I think it would be so, so adorable. But I just want to say thanks for watching. And be sure to watch the second video that shows me quilting this up. I'll be doing free motion quilting on this. I need to pick out a backing. I need to make a binding and that will be in my next video. Okay, now that I sewed this pattern up, I just wanted to share um, what fabric I have left. So here are um, the fabric requirements to make this and here's everything I bought and what I have left. So I don't think this would be enough to make another quilt. But I just want to show that there is, um, I kind of tried to keep the colors together, but I want to show that there is a good amount of fabric left. And I think on this pink um, for the snout, I think I ended up going with just like a, maybe a four or five inch piece. I can't remember. Um, so I did get more of that. And then, okay. So there's everything that I have left and I just want to share that. I like to share, um, you know, what the pattern, I guess the fabric requirements are and then what I use and then what's left over because I just want to share that, hey, there is quite a bit left over. Now, this will not make a whole nother quilt. I can already tell that because there's not enough brown, um, but I think I would have enough for like the snout here. I might have enough for like a face here. Um, but definitely there's not enough background fabric. There's not enough to do the cow. Um, there's not enough to do the star here, um, but there would be enough maybe just for like that face area there. Maybe the face and the eyes and the ears is what I'm thinking. Um, but I just want to share that. And I, I do think this pattern is so cute. And I did think to myself, gosh, if there was enough to maybe make part of it, like maybe I could cut out just what I would need for just the face, just this like below the eyes, this little area here. And I can like sew that up and have it set aside for another one. But I'm not sure if I'll do that. Um, but I do want to share, I just want to share that real fast. So that's all the fabric that's left over from um, this pattern. I followed the cut instructions here with the exception of like the black and the pink. I did overbuy on that. But then this is what is left over from this pattern. And I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for watching. And be sure to check back to see video two on how I finish up this Highland Cow mini quilt. See you next time. Bye.